It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's nightly-ish media roundup. I'm Roland Boyden, tonight's host. I'll have the honor of taking you through the next 15 minutes here in the local stratosphere and into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news. On deck tonight as we sum up the latest happenings here at BCTV, we're going to talk a lot about some town politics. There's a new select board member, new uh, news on the town manager mayor situation uh, with a special select board meeting held earlier this week that we'll break down. We're also going to talk about a big score for a tiny house. Very cool story here. We'll uh, tell you more about that headline in a minute. And we're going to talk about uh, the Vermont Health Connect project. That's right, healthcare uh, that you can buy for yourself or your employees online is coming this October. We've got some more answers for you with uh, footage from forums uh, hosted around the community. We're also going to talk Peter Welsh in town, uh, sum up the latest uh, video happenings on BCTV and plenty more. So if you've got the time, stick with us right here on 545 Live. I love this town. Brattleboro has an enormous heart. It's artistic, it's creative. It um, is a community that really comes together. It's been through fire and flood, and we will rise up strong, and I'd like to be part of making that happen. Welcome back to this June 28th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. That's footage of area resident Donna Mackenberg during her campaign this spring for a one-year seat on the Brattleboro Select Board, a bid that fell short with town board vets like John Allen and David Scholes taking the vote only to yield McEnroe's spot uh, at the table after all. As last week, the board announced they would appoint the Women's Freedom Center co-director to fill the seat vacated on June 18th by three-year member Ken Schneck. Now, normally that would be the top controversy here in Brattleboro, but with uh, Barb Sondag, longtime town manager, announcing her plans to resign effective this July 23rd, uh, it looks like there's more to talk about here, including the debate over whether or not Brattleboro should have a mayor. There was a special select board meeting this week that's prompted the clip but our story has got more. Let's roll into it. You have to look at it in terms of what's going on in the world you live right now. It's no secret that Brattleboro's penchant for controversy adds its own set of requisites to the position of town manager. There really are a lot of people who, who um, keep up with what's happening in the town. But for Barb Sondag, the municipality's reigning chief for the last seven years, the ante has been even higher. With a historic downtown fire, tropical storm and flood, an extra dose of lawsuits and budget brujas checkering her tenure, it should perhaps come as less of a surprise than it did to the community when Sondag announced she would be calling it quits on her remarkable run as one of the town's most respected managers. Barb Sondag, the town manager, has been offered and has accepted uh, position as city administrator in Olivet, Missouri. So what does that mean for Brattleboro, a town juggling the state's third highest population ahead of six of the state's nine listed cities, including the capital, and fresh off a charter revision, hungry as ever for a new debate? How about trading in the town manager, a position indirectly controlled by the masses through the electing of select board members, for a more direct reflection of democracy? A town mayor. What do you want to emphasize? You don't want to hire what you, what you have or what you had because you want to build on what you have and what you had. That full special select board meeting now available at brattleboro.tv.org if you want to find out more about the debate and the plans moving forward for town manager, interim town manager, mayor, and all like that. All right, we're going to move on here and talk Peter Welsh in Brattleboro for a moment. He was also in the area earlier this week. Uh, he was down here for a Chamber of Commerce sponsored appearance at the retreat and uh, also got a tour of the new Brooks House project from members of Masabi LLC, the investment group uh, behind the rebuild there. Now among the concerns voiced by Vermont's lone representative to the U.S. House, now in his fourth term, was that of undisclosed government surveillance on the American people. It's a topic buzzing through the Capitol corridors uh, this week after uh, government contractor Edward Snowden uh, released to the press previously unrevealed findings uh, of NSA government surveillance. And while pub uh, Welsh did publicly state his desire to see Snowden prosecuted for the leak, he was quoted uh, in The Reformer during his Brattleboro visit this week as saying, 
I think it does raise some fundamental questions uh, that I think the government needs to answer, and that is, why are we keeping secrets from the American people? And quote, end quote. Moving on, we've all heard the phrase, bigger is better a time or two, and housing markets are uh, susceptible to that philosophy as well. But that hasn't stopped the tiny house movement from uh, spreading its message of simple living successfully across the nation in the last few years. Uh, and now it's come to Brattleboro, part of a fundraiser unveiled at this year's Strolling of the Heifers, sure to please the masses uh, with a heartwarming story. We've got all the details in the clip. Let's head there. What began as a FEMA trailer alternative after Hurricane Katrina, spurred on by the housing crisis of 2008, the Tiny House Movement, a national push for simple living centered on the development of, yes, tiny houses, has continued to gain popularity. So what does that have to do with Brattleboro? That story begins with Chad Farnham of Farnham Cellulose Insulators, who envisioned building a tiny house as a way to help a group of 4th to 6th graders at Hilltop Montessori School get hands-on experience as part of their practical life work program. I framed up the tiny house with the 4th, 5th, and 6th grade students and they did all the measuring, they did all the calculations, we taught them how to figure out uh, angles and how to cut rafters and we framed the, the whole project right there at school. And with the backing of local hardware suppliers like Leader Home Centers, Janowitz and & Son and Sherman Williams donating the materials, the team was able to construct a finished 6 by 12 foot house. It was fun to see how they came into the project thinking they, they would sort of be watching or just doing some simple measuring. And then when we started giving them the, the hammers and the nails and, you know, spent time with them to safely, you know, use power tools, how they sort of grew and became really comfortable with that. And, and it was really nice for, for us to see and, and be part of. A new house that fetched over $17,000 for the school and for Morningside Shelter after it was raffled off at the Strolling of the Heifers Parade weekend this year leaving an overjoyed raffle winner with a new house and an overjoyed community with a new partnership for learning, fundraising, and practical living. It's a good experience, I think, for not just the kids, but for all of us involved to see that what we did helps more than just, just the, the school itself. Well, from here to Washington, healthcare has certainly been one of the hottest topics in politics this past year, but Vermont has made huge strides as it moves forward into a benefit exchange system, uh, dubbed Vermont Health Connect. We've got the full story with uh, all the script details for you. Let's take a look at the clip. There are different reasons why employers provide coverage to their employees. Um, historically, one of the reasons is because it's much more affordable to get it through an employer than to go out on your own. With the Affordable Care Act and with Vermont Health Connect, that's different. Moving on, today marks the first day the Guilford Country Store has reopened uh, after it closed in 2010. A purchase from the uh, village of Algiers has helped get it back on track, and members of the Guilford Select Board and town administration are hoping folks will come out and uh, support the new store. Let's take a look. It will be a soft opening. The doors will open yep. for business with no big hoopla. No big hoopla. But yes. just... At some yeah. point, we will have a community both thanks and appreciation event where we can thank people. All right, we'll move on here and talk seven town summary for a moment. Here's the uh, pre-canned spiel on that. The B and BCTV stands for Brattleboro, but there's actually seven other towns in our surrounding area that we serve, including Vernon, Guilford, Dummerston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica. <gasps> And uh, with uh, select board meetings from every one of those towns now showing on BCTV and subsequently on our website, brattlebrotv.org, there's plenty of municipal coverage to enjoy. This is all courtesy of our field producer, Rich Melanson, who in addition to turning around these meetings within a day, so folks can watch them both on our channel and online, has also uh, taken to getting me some notes so I can follow the stories here in those towns. Uh, we'll start uh, with animal control issues, which first surfaced last month in Putney. Uh, after animal control officer for the town, Henry Farnham, uh, told the board that uh, their town policies were not the problem, just the dynamics of enforcing them. The board did, however, uh, up the uh, fines amount, uh, the amount fined uh, for uh, violations of animal control policies. You are not required by the ordinance nor by state law to restrain your dog as long as it's on your property. The problem comes when it enters a public highway that's where the violation starts. So for joggers, runners, bicyclists, or whatnot, it's a dangerous fine line. You know, is that dog going to stop when he gets to the end of the driveway or am I about to get attacked? We'll move on now in our seven town summary and head to Townsend where last week the board considered its own uh, animal control officer options. I believe that we have the authority to impound and destroy nuisance animals. 
I don't, I don't know that I'm necessarily in favor of, of a dog ordinance. I, I mean, I, I don't own dogs. I think if you have dogs, you, you control your animal. If you can't control them, then I guess some slight dog ordinance may help. And you're not going to have people on leash law in this town. Well, customarily on our midweek edition of 545 Live, we like to talk about new things coming up on BCTV, but uh, with the this weekend edition being our first broadcast this week, we're going to take a chance to talk about it right now. Head into the fancy split screen graphics and promote a PSA for uh, a program, Salamanders in Vermont, from hardworking BCTV volunteer uh, M. Richards, working with BEEC and the Demerston Conservation Commission to talk a little bit about uh, how to deal with salamanders in this fine state. Each spring, spotted salamanders, wood frogs, and other amphibians migrate to their breeding habitat. The vernal pools and ponds their species have used for hundreds or perhaps thousands of years. You can catch that between programs all this week on PCTV or on our website, brattleboro.tv.org. And there's also still time to catch both our uh, live high school graduation coverages. We did them in HD this year, so you can watch them on our YouTube channel and at brattleboro.tv.org in that fabulous crisp high definition. Also on our channel at the times uh, listed below on the screen. Uh, catch both of those broadcasts. I want to take a look at our little split screen clip right now. I would like to hold my Graduation's available again online, broadwordtv.org. All right, uh, that's a full lid for me here as we wrap up this weekend edition of 545 Live, but I'd like to quickly promote Brattleboro Goes Forth Parade coverage this coming Thursday. It'll start live right here on BCTV Channel 8 at 10 a.m. Let's uh, hit the split screen here so we can get a little footage of what was going on last year at the July 4th Parade. Uh, that's coming up again this Thursday, Channel 8, 10 a.m. It'll be hosted by WTSA's Tim Johnson and Jim Maxwell. All right, uh, that really does it here. Full lid for me, uh, but make sure you stay safe out there, and we'll check in uh, in the coming week uh, right here again, BCTV Channel 8. In the meantime, night, everybody. Like board comments and committee reports. John? Just one comment, um, well, actually a couple. I don't know if it's going to be exciting looking for a town manager. Okay? <laughs> I don't think that's the, the correct term to use. But. <laughs>